Have you noticed spring has sprung? You probably have. You know, I'm from Florida, and so in Florida we have green, a lot of green throughout the year. And I moved up here in January one year. It was in 2008. And I thought that a storm had come through. I actually thought a hurricane had come through, which is kind of funny. I'm like, what happened, y'all? Everything is so barren, because that's what happens when a hurricane blows through. The salt water rushes up on shore, and it goes higher than the trees, and then in the days and weeks and months after that, the trees are just uh, look like the Midwest. So <laughs> anyway, it is fascinating to me to watch spring spring forth. I'm just amazed every year because it goes from that dormant uh, brown, beigey color everywhere to a beautiful spring. So first of all, I just want to acknowledge the beautiful lights in this room. It is so wonderful to be together with you, to feel your energy, and to celebrate spirit, and to also be celebrating spring together. Can I get an amen? amen. Yes. Woohoo! It feels wonderful. What I notice about spring is that I'm always looking to see which flower is going to bloom first. I meant to ask my friend Patty about this one bloom that I saw. It, um, it shot up and it, has, it was about this tall and it had little purple, tiny little flowers on it. And I didn't know what it was called. But then the next thing I saw was daffodils and now the tulips are out. So I love watching the changing landscape. I love looking to see what is going to bloom and what is going to blossom next. And isn't that a lot like our spiritual lives as well? There's always a cycle. There's always something within us that is trying to emerge. There may be some things lying dormant, and it may look like a hurricane blew through, <laughs> or a tornado or strong winds like we had this weekend. And sometimes it's the daffodils and the irises, and in the south it's the hibiscus and the, and, the, and the camellias and the azaleas and those tropical flowers bursting forth. Spring is such a powerful demonstration of the ever unfolding patterns found in nature and in our lives. So the emergence that we see in nature is a parallel to that inner blossoming. And you may have heard the phrase, Surely as day follows night, surely as day follows night, we rise again and shine and grow. And as surely as spring follows winter, our souls too carry a pattern for aliveness and growth, a spark of energy and beauty. It's similar to that pattern of a mighty oak that is contained within an acorn. I have to remind myself of that. Whenever I'm feeling dormant, whenever I feel like the storms of life have blown through or perhaps I even caused a storm or two, I am like the mighty oak. There is a pattern for perfection, a pattern for a mighty expression right within my heart and mind. And as we grow, we see more clearly. You know the phrase, as we know better, we do better? Yes, we are on this beautiful journey, much like the cycles of the seasons, much like the beautiful pattern of a flower coming into fruition. It's also fun to watch um, as I'm taking my walks in my neighborhood to see which flowers are going to be uh, more open, more blossoming. It's not like you can go up to the petal and, and tug it open. It is on its own path. It's on its own course. And you may be looking at a, a beautiful azalea bush or a camellia wood tree and see one that you think is about to open and you go by the next day, nope, still not ready. It may be in a few more days, but then there's some that spring forth that you're like, ah, that was a nice surprise. I know my life is like that. I can trust that the flowers are going to be blooming. I just may not know exactly which petal is going to unfurl next. So as we grow along our path, we bloom and blossom and learn more about who we are. And I believe that each one of us is ready for an expansive unfurling, an expansive unfurling, as like each one of us is a flower ready to come into full bloom, ready to be sparked in the world. Can I get another amen? I said I was from the South, so we're going to be doing some amens today. That's just how I roll. 
So the spiritual concept of a, our soul being sparked comes from Hindu teacher Adi Shankara, who refers to this flame, this flame within that is referred to also as God, spirit, the divine. And we are emanations of that flame. We are God in expression. And when I remember this truth, I feel what I call tapped in, tuned in, turned on. I feel like I'm in a flow. I feel creative. I feel inspired. I feel grounded. I feel capable. I feel empowered. I feel ready and ripe. A flower is not going to open up if it's not ripe to open up. But when I forget who I am as a spiritual being, I can feel separate and discouraged. I can feel lonely and sad. You can even feel that energy, can't you? We have those moments where we forget who we are, who we are, and whose we are. So what can we do to remember the truth of who we are? Well, one powerful thing that we can do is to come together in spiritual community, because what we do, it's like holding up a mirror, and we shine back to one another so that they, each one of us, able to see who they are. I'm able to see who I am more clearly when I can see you looking back at me, and you're able to grasp who you are and your impact in my life by the way that I look at you and the energy that you feel when we're together. That's amazing, and I'm glad that we've discovered that together. There's a lot to be discouraged at in the world. There's a lot on our hearts. There's a lot in the news. There's a lot on the street. There's a lot going on in our families, in our workplaces that may pull us off from knowing ourselves as a spark of God, from knowing ourselves as resourceful and resilient and capable. And the unity teachings contain within them the keys to inner peace, to greater love, to true abundance, to a sense of connection, vibrant health, productivity, and full expression of our talents and gifts. We've already witnessed talents and gifts today on the stage, and we see people shining their light, being who they are, and expressing their gifts, but you can probably recall a time in your life, maybe not even so long ago, where you even wondered about what gift you have to share. Perhaps you thought, well, I had that several years back, but I don't have it anymore for whatever reason. You know the story. You tell yourself the same story probably that I have told myself over the years. I'm not old enough. I'm to this. I'm not enough of that. I don't have training for this. I don't belong. Blah, 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 blah. The story, the story, the story. That story may always be there, but that spark is brighter than the story. And we can change that story through the power of our mind. And that is one beautiful blessing of the unity teachings is to learn to go into the divine mind through this portal, which is our everyday mind. We go there in meditation and prayer and in relationships as well. What would it be like to live in a world where every person saw their worth, where every person could sense their own spark, where every person could even tell when their spark may need to be flamed a little bit, may need to be fueled some, and where each one, each soul, let's include all life in this, that all life has a role in helping to bring about an awakened world. That's the world I want to live in, and that is the world that I want to co-create. Are you on board with me? Yes, we are team members in this, aren't we? We absolutely are. So for those who have ears to hear and eyes to see, we proclaim there is much work to be done, and we are the ones. We are the ones. From Matthew chapter 13, blessed are your eyes because they see, and blessed are your ears because they hear. As we awaken to what needs to be transformed in the world, we're able to see more clearly. There may be things that we see now in the world that 10 years ago or 15 years ago or 20 years ago we didn't even recognize was a problem. It was blind to us. And now we see. And through this process of awakening 
that Charles and Fillmore so beautifully demonstrated, along with our master way shower, Jesus Christ, demonstrated this awakening process. We step into that consciously, knowing there may be some very painful things in our life and in the world that we need to come to terms with and address. We have what it takes. And when we get discouraged or sad, we may be forgetting that we have what it takes, that we've got these keys, the keys to the kingdom, so that we can create a world that works for all. So with this clarity, it may even be newfound clarity because we're ever growing. When you look back where you were 10 years ago or three months ago or even last week, don't you see that you've grown? Can't you see, wow, I don't even feel like that person anymore. I'm surprised people even recognize me. And then there's those aspects of our life we may not have grown in yet. And so people probably still recognize us from week to week. But don't you sometimes feel so different inside? I know I do. So many of us may get overwhelmed at the news at times and may feel a sense of disempowerment. And yet as we remember who we are and remember our community and the power of community, we can move mountains and we shall. Instead of shutting down or numbing out, we remain open. We allow ourselves to have access to all the feelings that arise and we tune into the truth and we take inspired action. Much like Myrtle Fillmore did, she was diagnosed with tuberculosis as a young child and was told that she would be sickly for the rest of her life and probably would not live a full life. She attended a lecture by E.B. Weeks and heard this phrase, a combination of affirmation and denial, you are a child of God and therefore do not inherit sickness. And she sat with that and allowed that phrase to have its way in her consciousness through her unique understanding. And she sat in the silence every day and spoke to the cells of her body. She asked for forgiveness for the ways that she had been treating her body. Anybody need to do that? I know I do. She asked for forgiveness and she basked, what I call basked or bathed in the light of God, and she experienced a healing. And the word healing comes from the root, the word whole. She recognized her wholeness. She tuned into that spark, that Christ consciousness that dwells within every soul, and she embodied it. Embodying it is when it is, goes down to your bones. It's down to your feet. It's becoming a part of you. And she committed herself to living from that place. So I'm sure you would agree that the world needs us now more than ever. So what can we do to ignite that flame and live from this powerful place? Well, first, we can live our lives knowing that we are on a journey. There's been times in my life where I thought, here's a workshop, here's a class, here's a book, here's a relationship, there's a job, and I would like this, and here's a title, and I want this car. And, and some of that may have had a spiritual feeling to it, but I didn't recognize that there was a golden thread carrying me through my life to the places where my consciousness, my mind, can learn just what I need to learn, let go of just what I need to let go of, and take inspired action toward just what I need to do. It's as if there is a golden thread that, um, you know, when people do rock climbing or when they're in a cave, they hold on to a thread. It not it nice knowing that there's a golden thread that we can hold on to? I see a golden thread right through here. And just knowing that we've got that, that net, that touchstone. So Charles Fillmore, co-founder of Unity, believed that the Bible, both the Hebrew and the Christian scriptures, tell the story of our soul's unfoldment, culminating in the Christ expression, in the resurrection experience. The stories, the characters, the places in scripture, all representing something that we as humans go through in our lives. And nature tells this story as well which is why we see spring springing forth each year, even after the dormant period, even after the hurricane. 
so I thought, has come through, even after the storms of life have blown and left us feeling a little weary. There is something happening here, a planetary awakening, and we are a part of it, which is exciting to know, a great awakening. In order to play our part, to do what is ours to do in this great awakening, we must remember who we are as children of God and anchor in that identity. We are both fully human and fully divine. I believe and I believe that Jesus demonstrated that the portal into our divine awareness is actually through our humanness. It's not about avoiding our human experience or pushing it aside, ignoring it. One of the most powerful sentences in the Bible, and the shortest, is Jesus wept after hearing of the passing of his friend Lazarus, but before he raised Lazarus. He was fully in his humanness and allowed himself to feel his emotions, including loss. And how many times do we, and we in unity as well, stuff those feelings down? What if we acknowledge them? and allow them to move. And emotion is energy in motion. It just wants to be acknowledged so that we can emerge and become who we are. In my role in Unity Worldwide Ministries, I serve in development, which is fundraising and relationship building. And I work with foundations that support us in our work that in turn support our ministries and I get to study philanthropists. And one of my favorite philanthropists is Sir John Templeton of the Templeton Foundation. And I found a quote that he uses in in his work and I just love it and wanted it to share it with you. He said this, as we progress on our spiritual journey, we may be likened to the butterfly seeking to break out of its own chrysalis The various layers of our identities form a cocoon over the self that we are creating. The multiple steps and improvements of our journey represent the process of changing from a caterpillar to a butterfly, from a sleeper to an awakened soul. A few things stood out to me. The passage is so rich, so ripe. One was the idea that this, the chrysalis, contains us and that we build that chrysalis. We create the circumstances or we play a role in creating the circumstances which form that chrysalis. And I'm not sure if you're familiar with what happens. It's so magical. The butter, the caterpillar completely dissolves inside that cocoon, inside the chrysalis. It's called the goo. Has your life ever felt like you were living in the goo? Yes. And what's magical about this, absolutely magical, is that the cells in the goo, the cells of the caterpillar that have dissolved and become liquid, contain within them everything that is needed to become the butterfly. That's amazing. That means that even in the midst of a breakdown, everything needed for the breakthrough is present. Everything needed for the caterpillar to become the butterfly is right there. How is that like our lives? How is that like the emergence that each one of us is going through in our journey, along our journey? Maybe you're in a chrysalis moment right now. Maybe you're in the goo. (laughs) Or maybe you're in the goo in one area of your life, and in another aspect of your life, you feel like you are soaring like a beautiful butterfly. Mm. Wow. So we are awakening, and the butterfly representing our awakened state, we are awakening from an old dream. We are awakening from a nightmare at times that kept us separate from ourselves, from God, from one another. A nightmare of judgment, of comparison. How many times in your life have you sought to take two or three steps forward and then you ended up taking a step or two back? I can't do that. I'm afraid. I'm not enough, I don't have what it takes, or I'm too tired, I'm too busy, I'm not enough. Victoria Castle in her book called Trance of Scarcity says that before we even hit 
the floor in the morning, before we're even out of bed, before our feet hit the floor, we often say to ourselves, I didn't get enough sleep, I'm too tired, and I don't have enough time to do all that is mine to do today. So we begin our days at times with these beliefs. And so I have this little uh, trick that I've learned. You may laugh at me, but it helps me that every morning I put my magic gloves on. They are my gloves made of light. May I handle things lightly during the day. And if I can bend over fine, I put my magic slippers on. If not, I just twinkle my hands at my toes. I thought, hey, these are magic slippers. I don't even have to bend over to put, these are magic gloves. I don't even have to bend over to put my slippers on. And it reminds me through the day that I am the hands and feet of God and that I am light. I am light. A bold thing to say, I am the light of the world. Much easier to say, you are the light of the world. As Jesus did, you are the light of the world. Easier to hear when somebody else says it. Perhaps turn to someone to the left of you, to the right of you, in front of you or behind you, and say, you are the light of the world. You are. It's true. You are the light of the world. And if you're ready, if that spark has sparked enough, and I think it has, how about saying this truth? I am the light of the world. Not me, but I. (laughs) Put your hand on your own heart. I am the light of the world. Ah. Maybe it feels like you've fully embodied this, taken it on. Or perhaps you're like, "Mm, I'm still growing into those slippers, but I'm willing to try them on. I am the light of the world. Have you ever noticed somebody else's spark and noticed all the qualities that they have? They're admirable. They're wise. They're smart. They're good with money. They are creative. They are bold. And when you think of yourself, you may not claim those as being your very own. But the truth is, is what you see in others, the spark that you see in others is the spark within your very own heart. Maybe you have disowned that part of yourself. Maybe it wasn't safe as a child to express that spark. And so we put people up on a pedestal. It's called the golden shadow. It's time to reclaim the positive qualities about ourselves. It's cl- it is time to claim these potentialities. Perhaps it's in the goo, but know that everything needed is right there, and we can claim it. Claim it as ours. And whether you are just going to dip your toe into the pool called creativity, or maybe you're ready to do the backstroke in it, you might not be running your next marathon next week, but you may be willing to get the paintbrush out or go to a creativity class or sing a song with a friend. Who knows what else is possible? What else is possible? You are the spark of God, the spark of the divine. Mm. So how many of you are willing to step into this spark and be who you truly are? Perhaps bring to mind something that you would like to do in your life. Maybe it's a hobby or something that you used to do. You've set it aside. Maybe you got busy with work or relationship, and you're ready to dust that off. Let's just dust off the spark within us. Just dust it off. Shake the dust off your sandals. Yeah, there you go. Ah, I can feel the energy in the room. So we are igniting our flame right now through the power of our words, through the power of connecting, and the power of intention and prayer. And it looks to me like those sparks have just gotten larger and are filling this space. And we're going to be leaving this wonderful space and bringing the sanctuary with us as we go out into the world, and we will bring that spark with us, and we will begin flaming the fires and stoking the fires of those around us so that we create heaven on earth. Charles Fillmore believed that our purpose is to fully embody divine ideas and spiritual qualities, to fully embody And he believed we have it all within us. I had it all along. We're going to look back 
is in our full sparked nature and say, I had it all along and I knew it deep down inside. Richard and Alice Jafala in the Unity book called The Quest spoke about a place that we encounter in life called Possibility Junction. Each one of us today is at a crossroads because we stand right at that juncture of the past, the present, and the future. So it's a choice point. It's an opportunity to step into something new. So first, we recognize that we are on this evolutionary journey. We begin to sense that golden thread and see it in our lives. We recognize our spiritual identity and reclaim that for ourselves and we fan the flame, and we allow it to ignite more fully. That is how we shine our light in the world. And so it is. Namaste. Thank you, Thank you so much. Now let's begin to move into a quiet space and prepare for meditation on this journey we move from our head to our heart drawing attention within bringing full awareness into the inner sanctum breathing together as one we go within and we let go we just let go. Settling in more fully, we allow any tension to fade away. And as we bring our awareness fully into the present, into our body and soul, we feel more settled and grounded and yet more open to the divine we acknowledge that we are made in the image and likeness of spirit. We are sparks of the divine. I am a spark of the divine. I am a spark of the divine. So take this in and allow that energy to grow. Using the power of our imagination, through the power of your imagination, see yourself walking a path that represents your spiritual journey. Perhaps it is a trail in nature, close to a creek, or a beautiful field of clover. So much beauty to take in. And then on this path ahead, you see a wall that represents a challenge you may be experiencing in your life. And as you get closer to the wall, you're able to see what it is made of. Stone or blocks, bricks, could be cardboard. And then you see some little sticky notes left on the wall with your name. And the sticky notes say, you've got this. You are not alone. You have spiritual helpers and inner wisdom as well. You also see the sticky note that says, it is safe to take the next step forward on your journey. And you see one that says, remember your spark within. And you begin to hear it. Remember your spark within, your true nature. You notice that there is a peephole in this wall and you peer through it, seeing the magnificence of your own life on the other side, your future self calling you forward. Wonderful, supportive people are there to greet you and you see a field of daylilies and daffodils and tulips, your favorite flowers, a lovely lake, a bench to sit on, and you see that the path continues and that there are animals to connect with, beauty all around you and opportunities to serve humanity. 
And so you begin to slowly and carefully take down this wall. You chisel it. You remove the stones. You have the tools. You have all that you need. And you let this wall crumble. And it begins to fade away into nothingness. And you feel led to step forward into your new life, knowing that you have all you need within. Resting in the quiet, you affirm, I have what it takes. I am a spark of the divine. And we rest now for a moment in the silence. We rest affirming this truth. I have what it takes. I am a spark of the divine. We give thanks for this opportunity communing with spirit and we commit to living from an awareness of our true identity, fully human and fully divine. And we are grateful. And so it is. Amen. Mm -hmm.